In this demo, I'll walk you through our cloud identity security capabilities in Prisma Cloud. And right now I'm on the Prisma Cloud console and I'm specifically in the policy section. And I actually filter this down to just see our IAM policies. We actually can take a look down below of the, those different policy names. And starting from the top, we actually can look at things even from an SSO perspective to see, you know, Okta users with effective permissions to create AWS IAM users. Uh, we have another policy here that can actually look at risky permission sets. So things like where a, a user or a role could actually even elevate uh, their own privileges. Maybe even permissions that are overprivileged by a certain time period, like 90 days. Uh, if, maybe if a user or that role has not used a particular action, it's you know, most likely something that they don't need within that time span. Uh, granting wildcard resource access, uh, so making sure that you know there's no permission sets for that, that you kind of narrow down and make sure you right size and have least privilege uh, when it comes to your resources, resources that are publicly accessible, and then even cross account resources uh, for your IAM policies from one AWS account to another. And you even can create your own um, queries to actually look through your data to kind of find that net effect of permissions. So if I go to the investigate tab here, I'll choose a, a query that I built. This is our resource query language, what we call RQL. So actually I can click here to see uh, you know, what actions maybe does a Lambda function have? Does a Lambda function have the permission to delete a bucket, delete an object, or maybe a version of that object within Lambda? If I just click here. So I can see from the uh, this top or this first column under source, I get the name of my lambda function, and I also get on the next one uh, granted by. So what is what is the uh, the role? And this this role grabbed it from an AWS managed policy, um, and then also the cloud account it belongs to. So it looks like this lambda function uh, through this role is actually able to grab administrator access. So even though I was only looking just to see the what it can do from a delete bucket object and object version actually found that this Lambda function has full administrator access and actually can view the policy under options. It can show me the full statement. So it has the ability to run any action uh, for any resource in my entire AWS account. So this is definitely a big red flag. We want to make sure that we right size uh, these types of Lambda functions or resources or even users uh, to ensure that they only have the right person that they need. If this Lambda function is only interacting with maybe an EC2 instance uh, or an S3 bucket, we want to make sure that we only give it those permissions. And as I scroll down here, we also can look at a different function. This one actually has another role, but it's actually coming from a customer managed policy. So we actually can view this from an AWS managed policy, a customer managed policy, or even an inline policy uh, that you build. And if I look at these permissions, although we do have the delete bucket listed here and delete object, if I scroll down below, it's going to be only for these exact resources. So it might be that this Lambda function does need that access. Um, that's something you can look at throughout your environment and you know, talk to your different developers and DevOps teams. But the good part is that it's going to be for these resources and not for every single resource uh, within your environment. And let's now take a look at what that looks like uh, in terms of Azure. And I'll actually run a, another query here just to see maybe from a compute perspective, are there certain virtual machines in my environment that, that could even have the ability to delete uh, a Microsoft SQL uh, server database. So if I click here, I have uh, three different, um, three different, uh, or actually four different ones, two different roles for this one. Uh, virtual machines, this first one's coming from a user uh, managed identity, so it's gonna be user assigned. This is really useful in Azure to be able to assign permissions for your resources. Uh, the, the bad part about this is that the, the role it's given is owner. So this virtual machine has, uh, similar with the AWS example, has full administrative permission throughout your entire Azure account. So if I click on options here, uh, I get a list of the ID, the properties, and then under the permissions listed, uh, it's like the full action. So it gives a full description, full access to manage all resources. Another red flag, we want to make sure that if, if this is a virtual machine that doesn't interact you know, with that SQL database, only really has the permission to maybe list things that it needs from the database or find certain properties or even another Azure resource. So another example of being able to right size this. And now to take a look at alerts. So what, what does an alert look like as it comes into your environment uh, from the IAM perspective? If I go to alerts overview, I actually went ahead and filtered this uh, for IAM again. We can see a couple uh, custom policies that were created in this account. And if I look at this one here, we actually saw this a little bit earlier. Um, AWS effective permissions grant wildcard resource access. So I have five alerts here. So I have five instances, instances of this happening within my environment. If I click here, 
I can see below uh, the recommended action, so it gives a description, and it gives uh, the recommendation. So remediation um, you know, for a user, what steps you need to take, uh, go into the IM service, go to users, select the relevant user, and then under the permissions policy, you know, find the relevant policy, and then narrow down the wildcard permissions, right-sizing that permission to make sure it uh, you know, fits your security posture management. And then we also can look at this remediation from a compute instance, uh, an Okta user. So if we look at the resources below, these are actually IDs for EC2 instances in, uh, in Amazon. So actually this would be the one that we would need uh, to be able to log into that console, uh, go to that compute service, and then find that role, and then right size this. And even from a resource perspective, uh, maybe this is an S3 bucket uh, instead. So we'll give you the remediation uh, recommendation steps uh, for all three types uh, listed for this policy. And then we also can tie this back to uh, things like compliance. So we go to compliance here in overview. Actually, we'll just go to HIPAA here. So if we look at HIPAA as an, as an example, HIPAA has a few, uh, they have different sections for its requirement. On the bottom, this is our compliance page, shows you all your unique assets, your trend, your coverage. And the one that I want to look at as it relates to IAM would be person or entity authentication. So if I click here, and this can actually can kind of show me a breakdown of that section. Um, so it's a particular section within HIPAA that contains 10 policies. I have 500 resources that fall under this. Uh, I kind of get my pass and fail rate. And if I go to create report, we actually can generate a PDF report of this output. So I'll just save this to the console. And if I just click on download report here, we can now see kind of our full HIPAA compliance report. And as it relates to, you know, we look at our table of contents here, executive summary. Um, as I kind of scroll down, I can take a look and see maybe which ones might uh, correlate directly to IAM. Even this one, IAM policy tax uh, to users, we list this as a low um, severity, but it's something, you know, in this instance, you want to make sure they use a role instead of a policy directly. Access key enabled on a root account, look like this is passing. And if I scroll down to that section for person or entity authentication, I can see things like AWS MFA, not enabled for IAM users, so I have 455 passing, 35 failing, um, you know, ex policies with expiration, so there's an expiration period, you know, for those AWS policies. So we can actually tie this all back together with certain things of compliance for those different standards. Uh, throughout your account to see what's passing, what's failing. And then again, we'll show you those recommended steps uh, to remediate.